Hi everyone, this is Iris Jasmine Borden and I'll be discussing the audiovisual media. So before anything else, let me give you the objectives of our lesson. So at the end of the discussion, you'll be able to first define the audiovisual media, second, know the functions, guidelines, and uses of audiovisual media in teaching and learning. Third, identify the advantages and disadvantages of audiovisual media in teaching. And lastly, identify the three steps in producing audiovisual. So, audiovisual media is an electronic media possessing both a sound and a visual component, such as slide tape, presentations, films, television programs, corporate conferencing, church services, and live theater productions. Audiovisual materials are the most complete resources for teachers due to their availability and versatility, and they enhance the learning experience of students and teachers alike. So, audiovisual materials are important in education system. Audiovisual aid are those devices which are used in classroom to encourage teaching learning process and make it easier and interesting. It is also effective in dissemination of knowledge. Definitions of concepts First, audio materials. It is where sounds are stored and can be reproduced mechanically, electronically, or both. These materials include audio cassettes, audio cartridges, audio discs, and other sound recording. Second, visual materials. It encompassed a wide range of forms including photographs, cinema, and video films. Third, audiovisual materials are those things can be understood by observing visual aspects of anything. Examples are videotapes, DVDs, audio tapes, and audio CDs. Fourth, the audio. It is the recording of your voice. And lastly, the video. It is being presented in the screen and recording or copying and broadcasting of moving visual images. Functions of audiovisual materials First, teaching music, literature, science, and documentation activities. So, teaching these activities using audiovisual materials is common in this generation. Take for example, you're a history teacher and you have to present in your class a documentation video for them to understand well. So, the audiovisual media is used for effective learning. Second, teaching language and other content areas. So, contemporary development of audiovisual materials introduced a large and specialized vocabulary. Since audiovisual materials supply a concrete basis for conceptual thinking, it enriched the words by meaningful concepts to the students. It's not only correct, confused, or inaccurate or misleading conceptions but place the correct responses concretely before the student. Third, foster oral communication. It is the continuity of thought that is fostered when verbal abstractions are coupled with visual and auditory explanations. The attention-getting power of audiovisual materials and their simplicity combined to help the students think consecutive about a subject in his or her area. Fourth, to motivate interpretation and lastly, to make use of sketches and broadcasts. Types of audiovisual materials The audio. It is a sound especially when reported, transmitted, or reproduces. Under these are the recording and radio broadcast. Recording is the action or process of recording your voice. And the second type is the visual media. Under visual media, are the bulletin board where you can post or comment about a particular issue and the second one is the poster it is a printed picture used for decorations next one is the audiovisual media so under audiovisual media are the motion picture videos and film so motion picture videos are the video shows what motion picture means it is a sequence of images depicting people or objects in motion and film is a flexible strip of plastic or other material for exposure in a camera used to produce photographs or motion pictures guidelines for audiovisual materials in teaching and learning 
first, images should be as small as possible. So we use images because they are powerful and effective way to communicate. Web images are demanding because they require more data than text. To make the best use of images, keep the image dimensions as small as possible. When it comes to file size and display speed, small images fare better than large one. Second, always provide alternative content. Be sure to always have a backup file in case technical issues may arise. Take for example, your file is not supported so you come up to your backup content. Third, check copyright. You need to check it to avoid plagiarism. Fourth, use MP4 format for your videos. Fifth, provide transcripts for audio and video files. Provide transcripts because they are essential to people or your student who are both deaf and and lastly, save audio files in mono format. Mono format is a single channel audio. All audio is sent through one channel for playback. For example, if you are listening to mono audio, you will notice that whatever you hear in your right earbud, you will hear in the left earbud. Uses of audiovisual materials. First, stimulate interest and emphasize. Audiovisual materials stimulate encouragement in preventing a crime of a local community improving recreational facilities. Interest is so much part of audiovisual materials. Attention is the true factor in any process of teaching and learning. It helps the teachers in providing proper environment for capturing and sustaining the attention and interest of the students. Second, promote efficiency. Efficiency in teaching means the economy of times or energy and increased vividness. Audiovisual materials representation is more effective than an article or lecture of the same subject. In this way, audiovisual materials help the teacher to teach the students in a very meaningful and smooth way. As a result of these trends, students of the respective teacher as a result of these trends, students of the respective teachers can learn a topic or a lecture clearly. Lastly, clarify the subject matter topics. Subject matter topic presented for consideration in discussion, thought, or study. As a teacher, you first need to understand the topics correctly before discuss, discussing or disseminating it to avoid confusion to the learners. Advantages of using audiovisual materials in teaching First, provides diverse teaching techniques for learning. For example, as an educator, you need to encourage active learning, embrace small group and learning stations, group your students by learning style, not by their ability, and promote project-based learning. Second, simplify and clarify complex topics. As a teacher, you don't teach your students complex topics. Instead, you simplify it for them to understand it correctly and avoid confusions. Third, allow students to learn at their pace. Learning and ta tapes enable the learner to learn at his pace and work on his own. For example, you give an essay activity for your students. Allow them to write and work on their own and only guide them if they ask questions. Fourth, it can be reused. Since you're a teacher and you already made an audiovisual aid, you can reuse it for future use. Fifth, reduce the quantity of asked questions. For example, in an online class, it can reduce the quantity of asked questions because some audiovisual materials are being recorded already. Disadvantages of using audiovisual materials in teaching. First, it requires correct use. So, audiovisual materials should be correctly used to avoid technical issues. Second, not all concepts can be thought. Third, should include only image and fit for boards and might not guarantee learning. Fifth, to prepare it, good pronunciation is needed. Sixth, it can be difficult to children. Seven, good internet speed is required. Eight, the proper equipment is needed, such as laptop, cell phone, and other devices. Ways to use audio to support learning. First, podcast. It is an episodic series of a spoken word, digital audio files that a user can download to a personal device for easy listening. Second, live online discussion. It is between two or more people. For example, what we use today in the new Norman education. 
we use Google Meet to be able to discuss. Third, interviews with subject matter experts. This can be used as core or support for lessons. Fourth, student-generated recordings. Used as part of a learner activity or to record evidence. Lastly, recordings of public lectures where you can listen to audio recordings of previous lectures. Ways to use video to support learning. First, to demonstrate experiments. You can use the internet or search in the web the experiments that you have to demonstrate. Second, to exemplify abstract concepts. For example, you've showed your class an abstract painting and you'll come up to a question of what is the meaning of the art? To illustrate 3D models, and demonstrate time passage examples. It could be a slow-mo. Next is to demonstrate decision-making process, to summarize, to illustrate performances on music, or you can play a music or video on your devices, and lastly, to show practical examples. Three steps in producing audiovisual. First one is the planning. It is the first step in producing audiovisual. It is the time that you need to brainstorm on what content should you do and prepare what will you need. For example, the script, locations, artists, and so on. Second, the production. It is the shooting or recording stage. It is where you start to produce your video project. Third, the publishing. The final part of producing the, your audio or video. It is also requires editing and publishing your video in YouTube or Vimeo. Programs to create, edit, and publish videos. To create, under these are the Audacity. It is an easy-to-use multi-track audio editor and recorder for Windows. Second, GarageBand. It is a line for digital audio workstations for Mac OS, iPad OS, and iOS devices that allows users to create music or podcasts. Third, Windows Media. It is an application developed by Microsoft that is used for playing audio, video, and viewing images to edit. So these are the some apps that you can edit your video. Windows Movie Maker, Virtual DJ, and QuickTime Pro. To publish, either you can publish your video on the YouTube, Vimeo, or SlideShare. And that's the end of my discussion. I hope you've learned something out of it. Bye!